All right. Oh, yeah. So, I just finished up with the uh, the Lenny guitar. Um, I mean, totally finished now. No more things to put on here. But uh, I just wanted to go over this guitar because I do really, really like this guitar a lot. So, I had this Ash body sitting around for a while. I was going to do another Van Halen 78 with it, and I decided I didn't... I've done so many of those, I didn't necessarily want to just keep doing the same kind of guitars over and over and over and over and over and over again. Hence why I'm also making the Steve Vai Green Mini. So, this is the result of that. Uh, also had a maple neck sitting around. Wait, not bad actually. Um, sitting around with the, with the strap. I mean, it's... It's not as light as an alder body, or certainly not as light as a basswood body, but it's really not that bad. Um, especially if you have a nice big wide strap on like this, you know, it's not going to be that bad. It spreads out the weight pretty well. Uh, so this is a Northern Ash body from Supertone. You can buy them from supertone.com for like 80, 90 bucks. It's crazy how cheap these things are. Now, a couple notes with that. Um, you do have to be very conscious of the fitment. I'm actually, I may actually take this guitar apart uh, because the middle pickup route um, does not really like where it, this pickguard has it placed. It's it's pushed a little bit and angled, so a little. I may have to route a little bit more in here, but that's fine because the original Lenny guitar had the middle pickup position routed for uh, a humbucker anyway. So. What was the Lenny guitar? So the Lenny guitar was a an early 60s Strat, uh, 61 or 62, something like that, that Stevie Ray Vaughan's wife, Lenora, or Lenore, uh, Lenny, had bought for him. Um, I guess back when the relationship was still okay. And it had this weird thing where somebody had, and maybe Stevie did this, I actually, maybe the Stevie Ray Vaughan fans in the chat can tell me, uh, but somebody had put this chunk of a mandolin in here, uh, behind the bridge. Don't know why. Now, the original one was Alder, uh, but I just, I love Ash. I had this Ash body. I love Ash. I love the dark grain of Ash. Um, I put a mahogany stain on it. The original was more red, uh, to match the mandolin, but I really just, I love how this Ash came out. And I did put some coats of Danish oil on this to protect it even more. Um, so the pickups, I had originally bought a set of Fender Tex-Mex pickups, but I, the bridge pickup was super weak, did not care for it, so I did like the neck and the middle pickup, so I actually took the neck pickup off, put that in my Paul Gilbert guitar, which is back there somewhere, and the bridge pickup is sitting somewhere. So now it is a Duncan SSL-5, which is the same pickup that uh, David Gilmore uses in the Black Strat, and this is a Duncan SSL-2, and the middle is still the Fender Tex-Mex. So I, I like more powerful... Strat single coil pickups. I think that sound really good. Um, as a matter of fact, let me. Oh gosh, I can't remember where the name of the site I got the reflective letters and the uh, the mandolin. So let me uh, uh, the mandolin thing. So Lenny mandolin guitar. It is Axstream Creations. Okay, so Axe is in like your guitar, your Axe, and uh, Axstream Creations. Really, really cool website. So the neck is not. Special. It is not a bird's eye maple neck. Um, what it is, it's one of those cheap. Uh, I think I got this neck for like forty bucks. Um, I love getting inexpensive necks because carving a neck is a pain in the butt, but modifying a neck is not so bad. So I took one of those inexpensive, you know, forty dollar uh, maple necks, and I sanded it down completely, removed the frets toss the frets because they're usually pretty mediocre quality anyway. Um, removed the nut, which was plastic, you know, and I put in uh, Jeskar medium jumbo frets, which feel very nice. Uh, I Danish oiled the whole thing, and I put in, I had a big chunk of uh, bone blank sitting around, so I, I shaved down the blank, you know, carved it into a nut shape, and then carved the slots for it. Uh, and I originally had the old stamped steel tuners in here, the kind that had a little hole in the end, so you can put the string. 
I, I forgot that I utterly hate those, so I put in a set of locking tuners. Um, I also had this roller string tree here, but I, you can see that the strings aren't actually going through it, and they don't really need to. Um, I actually did the slots pretty high here, or the slots pretty deep, I should say, and so there's no chance of the strings popping out or anything like that, and they don't mandolin sound or uh, sitar sound or anything like that. Uh, now, to, to make the neck look older, number one, I used um, walnut, it was a dark walnut Danish oil uh, from Watco. So that already helps make it look older. You can see like it looks like it's old and stained, and I just love that look. Uh, sanded down to 600 grit on the back. But the other thing I did was I, when I did the frets, when I leveled and dressed them all that, I did not protect the fingerboard at all, which immediately makes the fingerboard look ancient. You know, so it has all those oils and all the gunk from when you're undo when you're sanding the frets and everything, uh, and so that immediately makes the neck look like it's a million years old. Uh, the other thing I did was use the soldering iron to put in the Stevie Ray Vaughan cigarette burn right here. Um, unfortunately, my fake cigarettes that I like to use for con for costuming it barely stays in here. Unfortunately, so uh, I have to figure that out for when I do like costume stuff. But, uh, and then this, the pick guard, you can see that the volume knob is out of the way. I had this uh, warm pick guard sitting around that somebody got the 920D option, I think is what it's called, where it moves the volume knob away, because I hate when it's right here. I'm constantly hitting it, and so I thought this might be a good one to use for that. Uh, this is a Fender Performer Bridge. I love these bridges, because it's... Standard 2 and 3 sixteenths uh, vintage screw spacing, but the string spacing is like 2 and 1 eighth, I think, uh, which is very close to being like an old Charvel bridge from the 80s. Uh, very narrow, feels very nice. Much more Gibson-like. Um, I much prefer how Gibsons play with the narrower string spacing here and the wider string spacing here, so it's a very even feel all the way up and down the neck. Whereas fenders tend to have very, fairly narrow nuts, like 1 and 5 eighths inch, and then very wide string spacing down here, which I don't really care for. But, eh, to each his own there. Uh, and it is a solid steel block, so it's not like it's a cheap, you know, knockoff vibrato. I mean, it's a definitely a nice American-made vibrato. So, and it just, oh my gosh, it just plays and sounds wonderful. So... <laughs> I know it's not really steep or volume playing, but... my way to make sure it would stay in tune with a lot of vibrato use. But it really... I mean, it's just unreal how good this thing plays. Uh, fairly new strings. I'm actually using the uh, f 9 through 40 um, set from, what is it, Nashville strings or whatever it is? 
gosh, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, and so these, the String Joy strings, the, the Broadway. These are the Van Halen strings. I just fell in love with them after I did a Van Halen guitar with them. Steve Ray Vaughan stuff, anyway. But it just is this clear. So there's, the, there's so here's the bridge pickup, the SSL five. You can tell it's a little more compressed. Can I feel the big difference between a brass or a steel tremolo block? Not really. I mean, so for brass. My the biggest difference I felt in terms of a, a brass or steel block it was in Floyd Rose, and that has more to do with the fact that I went to I think a, a, I went to a larger block. Brass I found tends to be a little, just ever so slightly squishier sounding. It's not quite as distinct uh, as as steel, which you know I mean depending on what your application is 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 important because you want to make sure that you're getting that tone you know for like you know if you're going for the eddie van halen tone that that kind of squishy kind of distortion that he had in the early early years like in seven on uh, van halen one you know where he's running through the cranked marshall through the variac he's using uh, an alnico 2 magnet pickup uh with fairly low output and an ash body with the the brass block, you know, so it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's, it's, I think a lot of times we guitarists are hearing what we want to hear, you know, uh, I've found definitely that I've made changes to guitars before, and I'm like, okay, I don't, I, it's probably a cumulative thing, like when people are doing replicas of uh, 59 Gibson Les Pauls, you know, if you're doing absolutely everything, if you're doing the nitro lacquer, uh, with no plasticizers, the the um, the hide glue, the, you know the right woods aged properly. You know it's it's Brazilian rosewood, Honduran mahogany, uh, with a midwestern or mid east maple. Um, you know, and it's it's pickups made in exactly the right way. You're using the correct six six nylon nut. Um, you know the correct metallurgy in the bridge and the tailpiece, the correct length tailpiece. Uh, you're using potentiometers that read 550k or higher you know all this stuff that goes into making a 59 gibson les paul sound like a 59 gibson les paul if you change one thing then you know and people are like well why doesn't it sound that way i put paf pickups in my uh in my gibson les paul studio why doesn't it sound like a vintage les paul um you're probably like 90 percent of the way there but like there's that last few percent that all the other stuff adds up to you know but i think that most of the time, in terms of like the difference between something like brass or steel block, it's it's important for the player if they think it makes a difference. It may be a little psychosomatic, you know, like there's some placebo effect going on. Because uh, honestly, the biggest differences I've ever experienced in a guitar ever when I've made the changes are the pickups. You know, that's 95% of what the change is going to be. Uh, and then after that, the biggest stuff, the biggest importance 
probably the strings, honestly. Uh, I, de I noticed an immediate difference when I strung this guitar up with these 9 through 40 nickel strings versus the uh, stay in tune, st the sit strings I was using, which was 9 through 42. And they were like nickel steel hybrid, I think, or something like that. And the other huge difference, the, the other ma massive difference, these, the pick. You know, between the pickups, the pick, and the strings, that's going to be the mass, that's going to be the m vast majority of where your, your tone difference is going to be. Uh, going from a steel block to a, a brass block, if every other parameter is equal, are you going to hear a difference? No, well, maybe. But if you think that it makes you feel play better or sound a different way, then so be it. Um, but, you know, just... I'm getting a lot of pop right now. I have these strings set really low. Because, I, I mean, I did this fingerboard perfectly even. You know, totally smooth all the way down and have it set flat. You know, so it is absolutely, like, totally even all the way up the neck. And it just, it's crazy. And, yeah, the woods are important, too. Um, strats with humbucker doesn't sound like a spot. Yes, and that's for a variety of reasons. Um, one... A major one being that strats are a longer scale. Um, so for a given tuning, these strings are going to be tighter. Uh, you know, that's why they like people to do the fa the fan fretboards thing, so you can have a really long scale for your low your low string, and then a nice comfortable shorter scale for your higher strings. You know, you get maintain that nice tight sound for a low distortion. Um, and then, of course, there are all the differences in terms of, like, the type of bridge that's being used, you know, stop tailpiece versus this, um, you know, this six-screw thing uh, and all that sort of jazz. And, you know, the woods are important, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I've watched a lot of the videos of, like, Paul Reed Smith going over tone woods, uh, doing examples of people, like, using different pieces of tone wood as percussion instruments. Uh, and he's like, you know, you can hear here, this is Brazilian rosewood, and you can hear what this sounds like, and you can hear, and here's some mahogany, and hear what this sounds like, and here's some sapile and a African mahogany, and all, you know, all that stuff. And going through it, and has very different tap tones, and all that sort of jazz. Um, you know, I think that for us, for guitar players, the most important thing is remembering that your audience doesn't care whether it's Indian or Brazilian rosewood. If, your finger, if you're playing well on it, and you sound good on it, great. You know, like, I... I mean, I, I, that, uh, I got very lucky with my Gibson Les Paul that I bought it, and out of the box, it played amazing. That 94 Les Paul Classic that you've probably seen on here a couple of times. I've had other guitars that were really expensive um, that played and sounded like dogs. You know, they were just not that great, you know? Uh, and I handed somebody else, and they liked how the action is, and they, you know, they sound great on it. You know, so... There's something to be said for the cumulative effect of everything, you know, all the stuff together uh, that goes into how the tone comes out of your amplifier. You know, people say, oh, well, you know, Eddie sounds like Eddie no matter what he plays. Like, well, yes, but if you were to just go, how would it sound? Would it sound more midsy? Would it sound more scoop midsy? Would it sound more distorted, less distorted, clearer, muddier, all that sort of stuff? You know, that that's what people are, I think people are talking about. So when people say things like, oh, the tones in the fingers, like, to a certain extent, yes, yes, you're still going to, you're still going to be able to play like you and your note choices, your phrasing, how you hit the string, you know, the angle of attack, the type of pick you use, how hard, whether you're plucking a little bit, all those little differences are going to add up. And then... What is the guitar made of? What is the wood? Made, you know, the body wood, the neck wood. How is the neck attached? Is it bolt on? Is it neck through? Is it glued in? What kind of glue is used? What kind of frets are they? Are they nickel silver? Are they uh, the brass, the, the the gold kind? Are they stainless steel? What kind of nut do you have? Are you using a bone nut, a synthetic nut, uh, a brass nut? Is it slotted properly? What kind of tuners are you using? Are they locking tuners? Or are they non-locking tuners? Are they heavy tuners? Are they die cast? Or are they old Cluson stance steel kind of tuners? You know, what is the weight of the various pieces are you using? Are you using titanium, brass, steel, what have you, aluminum uh, for your neck screws, neck plate, 
um, tremolo claw, what kind of springs are you using for your tremolo claw, what are your saddles, what is the block composition, what is the, uh, you know, how many screws are holding down the block, uh, what are your potentiometer values, uh, what kind of uh, capacitor is in there, are you using thicker, thinner wiring, aluminum, copper uh, wiring, are you using, uh, you know, what cables are you using, you know, like Eric Johnson will go over every single one of these aspects in his guitar in his cables in his pedals in his rigs everything uh like he he can he will go over like do am i using the right length and composition of cable to get my exact tone that's that's how how much he goes over every aspect of it you know so it's all of it it's everything it's all together you know for me the most important part is ultimately does it does it feel right? Because I'm going to play my best if the guitar is set up right. Um, I did not do that for a very long time. I made a lot of guitars over the years that I'm like, well, I've done everything right. Like, I've combined all the right parts, and why does it sound and play like garbage? And it's because, well, I didn't pay attention to, like, slotting the nut properly. Make, you know, doing a nice job with the frets. Uh, you know, setting my pickup height. Pickup height is a huge, huge change. Uh, you know, and some pickups like to be set high, some pickups like to be set low. Uh, they, that makes a huge difference. How far, how close is it to the bridge? How far away from the bridge is it? Um, you know, and then you have crazy guys like, uh, uh oh gosh, well, I was going to say Nigel Tufnell with his four pickup guitar where all the pickups are next to each other. But, uh, I was thinking more of the Frankentelli played by Steve Morse. Steve Morse, that's who I was thinking of, where he has like four or five pickups just crammed next to each other and the magnetic fields interfere with each other and they make and that guitar is a very unique sounding guitar um how much wood has been routed out you know there's a difference between swamp ash and northern you know and heavy ash even though they're the same tree they're the same species they're very different sounding and feeling woods because of where they grew you know swamp ash is grown in swamps you know the the, the trees grow quickly they are uh, how is it how is it exactly with the swamp ash that it works out so that you get these air pockets inside the wood uh and then northern ash grows very slowly they're very tight rings and it makes uh, it makes the wood very heavy <laughs> I wish I could play like Stevie, <laughs> but, um, you know, and that's, the, and that's the, you know, there's so much to all of this about how, uh, the guitar sounds the way it does, you know, that when, when we are talking about, especially with the Van Halen fans, when we're talking about, uh, you know, sounding like Eddie, um, there's so much. And we also forget about with guitars that are recorded, um, how the tone is so affected by the mic choices, the production values, the board that they're using, um, you know, the medium, the room that they're recording in. You know, like you listen to, okay, so a good example of this is listen to Black Sabbath's Heaven and Hell and Black Sabbath's Mob Rules back to back. The guitar tone is pretty different between the two. And you go to uh, the Live Evil recording and the tone is dramatically different. Even though Tony was using pretty much the same guitars and mostly the same amplifiers, the sound is so dramatically different between those three albums because there were big differences in terms of how they recorded the guitars, the context that they were recording in. Um, you know, that those make a, those made a, a much bigger impact on the tone than exactly what guitar he was using, you know, and what the wood was or what the, you know, what the finish was. You know, um, these are not violins. You know, we think about... Uh, vintage uh, Cremonese violin makers like Amati and Stradivari and the the importance of the lacquer that they used in the in the impact of the tone well that is an acoustic instrument that is relying mostly on the air inside of it to produce that tone and that sound and these are slabs of wood that are relying on these magnets with coil wrapped around them for the tone mostly um, you know, so there's, 
there's a lot that goes into how somebody sounds and you know like people who have tried to replicate Stevie Ray Vaughan's in step tone have gone insane from trying to figure out what amps did he use how many amps did he layer the guitar tracks um, you know they, like he was playing through just balls of different amplifiers on that record um, you know the the guitar the, the um, Texas Flood I and mean, he's recording through the uh, Jackson Brown's Dumbleland bass amp for the entire record. And yet, you listen to live recordings where he's playing through his Marshall uh, Club and Country or Fender Vibrolux, and it sounds identical. You know? Like, so there, I don't mean, know. No, no, context matters a lot. Recording processes matter a lot. Anyway, I'm getting off the tangent here. Uh, suffice to say, really happy with how this guitar came out. <laughs> I'll catch y'all next time.